Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 98, getting to the middle of uh, February. Tomorrow's an awesome day. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, these meetings are recorded for those people who are unable to be here uh, with us right here, right now. Um, in case you ever wonder where the introduction starts, it's always kind of weird. I realize I went back to good morning, good afternoon, good evening after doing good afternoon, good evening, good morning. And I do that based off of my time zone and where we're at. So it's still morning for me at 11.30. Anyway, trivia for those of you that are wondering, as I know you weren't. Uh, agenda. We actually have a fairly decent long agenda um, today. Uh, we'll do the 3103 update. I actually do have more information. We'll do triage because we should do triage. Uh, Bob wants to talk about pull requests and issue templates because we can do that now at GitHub. Yay. Um, I want to talk about .NET Foundation, and then we'll do our usual questions and comments and things like that. All right, so we got a full day. Let's go ahead and get rolling in this. 3103 uh, branch with one big fix, still a GDI failure. The WinForms guys have made it clear it is a GDI failure for them. Um, it's not clear what they can do. They don't seem to know the root cause of the problem beyond the fact that set DLL, set default DLL directories is causing it. They've filed a bug against the GDS people, and now we're all kind of waiting on yet another group to finally try to move this thing along. I'm going to give it another week. Um, they've, the WinForce people have been, they've been decent. They've been good. I, I understand their problems and stuff like that. But we do need a solution here because this is a security, <laughs> exposes a security problem for us. For, so I'm hoping they will continue to move this forward. Um, and since they're still being very responsive, which I appreciate very much, despite the amount of effort it's taking to push this thing along. Um, we'll give it one more week and we'll see where it's at. So anyway, this is a source of frustration for me. It's taking up way more time than I want it to, but we do need a solution to it. So there's your happy, happy, super duper update on GDI plus failure causing issues with wind forms when loaded inside a uh, burn that is protected from the DLL hijacking problem that we had of last month for those of you that have forgotten all the keywords to this thing. Somewhere in there, if you Google search it, you'll get the right answer. Um, moving forward. Triage. Bob, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Issues, no label. Wait, what? 739 open? I hope that's not right. Maybe I didn't hit enter. Whew. I was scared for a moment. <laughs> there like, we go. Yeah. No way. Oh, and right there, hitting enter, I lose the mouse cursor. We saw it for a second. Don't hit enter. Yeah, right. Uh, you are the only one still talking about this. Are we done with this bug? We are done with this bug. Yay. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. And I can't hit back? Okay, I can't hit backspace to go backwards. Web documentation for Wix and FX is mangled. Come on. There we go. Yes, it is. We need to go fix something or something or something. Right? Yeah, it works in the chum. Looks good in the chum, but not good on the website. Probably a markdown goofiness or something. Something. Yeah. Maybe it's a common mark difference. It's possible the website oh, has a common mark and oh, the internal one's not. Yeah, maybe we should not. Uh, make that consistent. Uh, it seems like a good idea, especially if we're going to have bugs like this. Yeah. Um, so wait, it was common mark, and what was the what's the oh, I, compiler using? I don't know. Markdown, markdown sharp. sharp or markdown yeah. deep. It's one of the two. I think it's marked down sharp because that's like the the one one file. Yeah. So anyway, version. I think that's right. So yay, it would be probably good to get us on common mark everywhere since the goofiness of the markdown spec and all that is challenging. So plus it's a lot easier to see that. something in the chum. Yes. So all right, cool. So this is clearly a problem. Should be fixed. Be great. Someone wants to do yeah. that. Um, should we want to put it in 3x? Should we create a milestone for web? That's uh, why I was kind of yeah. Let's put mumbling this, there. We, let's we should a milestone have. for web that basically is yeah. Whoever, whenever this gets finished, go submit it to the web repo, and it, it will be on the website within 10 minutes ish, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. There's something, some web issues, some site issues are going to be tied to. Uh, you know, software milestone, but I agree, a lot of stuff is just, you know, whenever. Mm, yeah, that's true. This may not, well, whatever, yeah. 
All right, just do that. I'll figure that out. Lux Lib Wix Proj Error Unrecognized Good. Hmm. On yeah, that's a weird voted thing. Is it? Yeah. Voted. Well, I, it's a voted. Oh, error. it's in Wix Four. Is this yeah. Wix Four? Yeah, this is Wix Four. Yeah. So we should talk about issue templates sometime today. You think? <laughs> yeah, good idea. Yeah, let's toss it in four. Call it good. Someone can look at it. All right. Although trying to rebuild something, there's never been great support for building stuff inside Visual Studio, especially the. I, I don't. Even, oh wait, are they trying? Wait. Oh, this trying is to build, our project. This is not using yeah, yeah, Linux. Yeah. Oh, this is our project running inside it. Yeah, I don't care. I don't. No, if I care. I don't think I, I'm trying to think. I don't think that Lux is even in one of the stock solutions. I don't think. And I, there's I, no way it's going to work if you just try to open the Wix lab, the Wix proj. Yeah, that yeah, this whole self-hosting thing. I don't. We don't do a lot for this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell you what, let's toss it in 4x, and if someone wants to do the work to make this all work, I'm fine with that. But that's not how I operate normally. But yeah, I, I hear it. But I also don't work in Lux. If I worked in Lux, I could see myself trying to make this work. Although yeah, probably well, and, not and the Wix project. I'd probably just, I'd probably just generally blow those off. But, but that's me. That's not yeah. to say that someone else that wants to go through and make the solutions and all that kind of stuff work for this. I'm okay with that. Actually, that's a good point. It, I mean, when David and I were building Lux, we you know definitely had a solution, but I doubt we ever, you know, even submitted it. All right. Well, so anyway. I use the command line. Yeah, Jacob used the command line. So we'll just... But hey, if they want to fix it, I'm all for that. Ah, yes, this one. Uh, I, these guys actually contacted Fire Giant as well, which is kind of interesting. Uh, oh, that is interesting. Yeah, so we'll... This thread is basically the .NET Core CLI guys use Wix to build their MSI and bundle. Um, and all A that bundle? Kind of who, who added that? Yeah. Um... And uh, so they're having problems getting it running in a container. Um, it looks to be something about the container, and we'll go from there. So I think we should leave this open until we get to closure on this. And I saw yeah. this come through the, the general contact channels of Fire Giant, and someone will pick it up. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, uh, I'll just let that one fall through, even though I knew <laughs> bits and pieces of it. I was like, we'll let that go, and we'll see where it lands. But, yeah, yeah. There are too too many pre-release bits there for me to deal with in my uh, copious spare time. I agree. They they can go tackle it. They'll get somewhere with it, or they'll hire Fire Giant, and Fire Giant will spend resources on it. I'm pretty sure. If we That'd be fun. It. I'd I'd like to get paid to work with containers. I don't know that you'd get it, Bob. You're busy. Um. Anyway. <laughs> but I want I want to play I, with I, the I, I cool stuff. All right. <laughs> That's not work, business, and pleasure here. All right. Uh, 3.11.0.129 doesn't work with Visual Studio 2015. Oh, yeah, Sean said this is already fixed. Yep. We need to do a build. I will probably do a Wix 3.11 build. I was curious to see what we picked up in triage today. Um, do we have a Fire Giant user on GitHub to assign to FG as FG is picking it up? Yes, there is Fire Giant code that you can assign items to should you do that, and we will do that sometimes. I'm not saying that Fire Giant's picking up that bug. I'm just saying... They've contacted people at Fire Giant that could do that. Uh, but yes, you will occasionally see bugs that are assigned to Fire Giant, which basically means somebody at Fire Giant is working on it. Um, or if they're assigned to me, it's usually that I'm picking it up in my copious free time um, or work time, depending if I feel that's the most important thing to do. So anyway, Fire Giant means it's somebody here, and here being the distributed Fire Giant, because they're not all in my office. Um, in fact, I'm the only one in my office. Anyway. That's a good thing. Uh, as my last blog post pointed out, um, <laughs> which did a poor job of explaining to everybody that it is running in Seattle right now. And if none of that made sense to you, you need to go plug into a whole lot of different context. Anyway, for a duplicate symbol when referencing four. Yeah, all right. We should toss this in four and make sure this works in the end. Four oh. It's entirely possible. Something's gone awry here, um, especially with that dot hexadecimal invalid character is not a useful thing. So that, that, I've seen that before. Um, yeah, the, the new file thing. format has some some can I think the error messages in the new file format are not great in certain cases, and so it's a matter of 
flushing those out. That's why we should toss this in four and go figure out how to at least make the error message better. And then if there actually is a problem from there, go do more. So yeah, let's toss this in four. Done. Um, and we're done. Done and done. Love it. No, not that window. This window. Da, 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 da. Pull request review. Things have been a little quieter on pull requests. I know Bob has been doing some stuff. Um, and on that note, I thought we would do Bob's pull request, which is the one at the top of the list that we can actually work our way through. Probably the biggest problem with this pull request that I remember. Oh, and I've lost my mouse cursor. This is really hard. Let me see if I go here. It's back. Go to IE. It's here for a little bit until I click once. All right. Long enough to get the files change tab. Yep, see, there it goes. Disappeared. Gone, gone, gone. Very interesting. Anyway, um, this bug will need to be ported to four. Yes, yes. Technically speaking, it might have should have started in four, but we have to figure out when we're going to get hardcore about that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't really know how to do that. Um, anyway, um, so the idea here is to do version major and version minor um, additional uh, stuff. Since you're here, Bob, uh, why do yeah. you choose to do this? I'm just curious, like, because you are here or you are working on something else? Um, actually, wait, when when did I submit this? Not long ago. It, it, it feels like it might have been a a weekend thing. I, I spent some time. I went going through uh, bugs. Speaking okay. of, you know, when yeah. things should be started and all. Um, but I have been spending a lot of time in burn, so Got those it. probably just attracted me. Okay, all good. So the thing that's missing here is the install folder, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So, so yes, Jacob, yeah. you're right. This is this is need to pass the full validation suite. It's a warning if you don't put these things, even though we have the other ones, I think, as warnings. But anyway, it's easy to do. The hard part that we're missing is install folder, which is yeah. definitely a concept I think we should burn <laughs> into uh, the system deeper, um, both in MSIs and in bundles, that we should declare something to install folder um, so that yeah, we can do definitely. smart things here. But uh, basically, ARP install location, or whatever you want to call it. So, um, neither here nor there. Um, so the only thing that caught me funny on this was that, and I, can I, I guess you can see the little blue plus sign over on the right, is that this is doing a shift and then casting it to a word, and that's yeah. doing the work to truncate it versus doing yeah. a... Okay. Well, so you know, we talked about, you know, uh, casts, you know, C-style cast versus static cast. Yeah. Um, but that's what the original code was doing, too. And, yes, I also sat there and went, huh? Because I'm used to, you know, having to... Mask it off zeros. before you. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, and so these didn't. And I thought, really? That's interesting. So just the cast alone is enough? Yeah. Apparently, that's the case. All right. Uh, well, not apparently. It is the case. Um, I, I'm... I, I saw it and I went, oh, that. that's kind of neat. Um, part of me is like, uh, it, it seems that we're losing something, uh, some, some, we're losing some context there. I mean, you could tell pretty quickly with the shifts that that's what we're trying to do, but it's like, yeah, you know, might not be bad, but we're, we're just, we're, we're relying on, on, this is not undefined behavior, so I didn't go, you know overboard. Couldn't we have one union on the QW version part of that struct? Oh, have like a four-part version unioned with the keyword? The keyword? That's interesting. I, um, I'm not against that idea, but I would like to say that if we did anything like that, it'd be a thing we'd just do it in four. To avoid oh, for sure. Because breaking changes it, and when we do that, I'd like to toss in that we should just, we honestly should create, make, probably make versions like an opaque <sighs> struct, so that we can start putting other versions. Because I do think uh, semantic versioning is going. Because I want to bring semantic versioning in at some point in time, um, yeah. and then we need to do things that are smart to make it easy for us to do 
useful things like this where we do need to get a four-part version out as quickly as possible or whatever and things like that. Anyway, so if you're looking for something fun to do, um, I'd be happy to talk about anybody that was thinking about doing that. Um, otherwise, this looks good. I think we will declare the success. Okay, okay. Nice small little pull request. Moving on. PR and issue templates. Bob, it's all you. Why, Rob, why don't you pull up that uh, oh, yes. that file there? I, I have it, right? Da -da -da -da. See? Look at me being prepared and everything. So this is the uh, you know, contributing.md file that comes up when you go to the issues repo. Um, and it, it's a little uh, subtle, I'll put it that way, um, in that it shows up as a bar that says, hey, this this repo has notes about contributing. You should go read them. Um, it is subtle at best. Um, yeah, the actual quote is, please review the guidelines for contributing to this repository. Um, so if someone does actually click it, then they get this page here. Uh, something that GitHub either just added or just made public is the idea of issue templates where you can have some default text in, in an issue when you create a new one. Uh, that would kind of skip over the whole subtleness of, subtle, subtlety of the contributing.md link and just make it right up front, here's what we, here's what we want in a bug report. Um, so I believe I have, I'd ask you to switch back to the to the PowerPoint slide, but I just realized that it would just have to go slip back. Um, so, yes, good search first. Okay, so I, I so I'd like to propose that we ha we actually do create an issue template because if you switch back to the contributing.md page, Rob, um, the these four bullets here that I'm pointing to that you can't see. Um, these describe the things that we want out of every bug. Um, and we can just put these in as, you know, we can probably just put them in in this form, really. Just, you know, look, if it's a bug, up front, give us version numbers. Include all of this information that we need. Um, and just, you know, leave room for people to, to fill out their own. Um, I think that's a positive thing. You know, we've talked about uh, having to go back to people uh, on Fridays. I mean, sometimes Rob and I and other people will poke around in issues that, uh, you know, and we'll say uh, which version or, you know, please attach logs or whatever. Um, but otherwise, if we don't do that, then, you know, it, it won't happen until Friday meetings. So I think putting this stuff in there is good. Um, there are some other things, like, you know, we have the, the the first paragraph up here, which says, search first, please, um, which is not, uh, it's not a template, per se, it's, it's, look, we want you to do this separate from what we want in the bug report is things you should do, which is also the, the other item, which is, the paragraph I added at the bottom here, which is, this is not, you know, some some projects tend to use issues for everything. We prefer mailing lists and don't want, you know, big, long discussions happening in issues. Um, and we also don't want support in issues. Yeah, we have mailing lists for that. Yeah. Um, so I guess really it boils down to, uh, one, uh, you know, anyone have objection to including the four bullets there in a template form? And, you know, I'll volunteer to massage uh, the text as, as necessary. Uh, the second is, do we want to include these non-template things that kind of push on, um, on the users? And some might say not entirely, you know, politely um, as to how the project works. 
Yes. It's a I'd reminder. Like, it's not a template item. I'd actually like to go further and maybe More have, rude? No, actually a little uh, less subtle. Uh, I, I'm fine with polite, but having one of the bullets that they have to fill out, mm -hmm. the last one being um, remove the text at the top of this template that says you did search and that you did do this. So basically say, go read these things above and remove that text. If you don't remove that text, we're just going to close your issue. <laughs> basically, in, have a part that's that whole, did you read this kind of yeah, thing. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Such that if they leave it behind, we can kind of be like, yeah, you need to spend at least a little bit of time. Um, uh Getting your providing us information so we don't spend a lot of time, you know, trying to guess what you did. So I would put that as a last bullet. It was basically, you know, verify that you did the first two paragraphs and then delete those two paragraphs and this bullet point before submitting your item. Something simple, right? But such that they don't, because my fear is that if there's a paragraph, even a sentence above check boxes or you know bullet points, that they're going to skip right over the paragraphs and go straight yeah. to the check boxes. So the last sure. check box being delete this check box and remove the two paragraphs which agree that you have done those two things. Have a nice day. Well, the other thing is, is I don't know that we can actually do check boxes, but we, you know, these could be bullets. Um, we're, we're asking them that they searched. Yes. And the response is yes or no. Um, yeah, I'm I'm inclined to do it as forcing them to read the text and delete stuff just to make okay. the issue. Because again, then that means that we won't have our issue starting with this gigantic paragraph or sentence. You know, even if yeah, yeah. I'm always saying, did you search? You'll be like, no, they should have deleted it. If they didn't delete it, we're like, oh, someone didn't bother to read what we wrote, so maybe we should just get rid of this thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are, there are again, projects Projects work differently, right? On GitHub, yeah. um, you know, a, a lot of projects, because GitHub doesn't have forums or mailing lists, use issues uh, more liberally. Uh, some projects, some projects do what you suggest. They actually have bots that look at um, issues um, to follow a certain form, and if they don't follow the form, they get automatically closed. Yeah, we, we have so. we have a bot like that. His name's Sean. <laughs> he does a good job searching of issues and finding duplicates. So. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. So um, I, I'd like to do that. Keith, I would. I would add. Uh, with with GitHub we can attach, so I don't think we have to uh, we don't have to worry about about pasting. We don't want them pasted actually, since we can do attachments. It's kind of cool. Um, although that I, I'll make that explicit in the in the text. Um, and Jacob, yes, meeting time is wrong. Um, I copied this straight from one of the pages on the website where it's also wrong. Uh, but since we are planning on changing the time anyway, I'll fix it then. Oh, we're discussing it. Well, we will be discussing it, even though I forgot to put it as a bullet item on the list. Yes. Well, okay. you, you own the agenda, so go ahead. All right. Um, uh, so consensus seems coverage. we should do it. Um, so the the next item on the agenda was uh, pull request templates, and that's where I have. I, I'm not sure I see a lot of value in pull request templates. I don't feel like we've had a big problem with pull requests. I mean, and in general, the data. Because honestly, in that case, you have a lot of data. It's called the code. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. And it's well, not often yeah. that we get pull requests that we're like, what? Except yeah. from Heath. We get those sometimes. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> uh, so uh, otherwise, yeah, I don't think we need them. <laughs> yeah, I think someone someone contributing a pull request is, you know, is probably less likely to make um, you know, some of those mistakes um, of not providing enough detail just because, you know, at that point, you are providing detail one way or another. Yeah, so I don't think a, a PR template is necessary. I think an issue template will be very good. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm there. Other people? Yes, no, maybe? Whatever they're like, I don't have to do with all this project management stuff, so it doesn't matter. Well, triage hopefully will go smoother with an issue template, though. It won't be a whole it, lot. It, it really what could. The, it really huh? could. It's 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 not a huge problem for us because we don't generally get you know, say we get at most ten issues a week. That's true. But mm -hmm. I see projects that get a lot more, and 
they are spending a lot of time, you know, a lot of human time trying to go through things that really should be distributed. Yeah. Cool. So let's do that. Okay. Let's, um, I'll put that on my plate. Cool. I'm glad that that feature came along just about the right time for us. It really did. Yeah. It was just about getting a point where it's like, Rrr. this is the stuff that in tiny bugs you would fill out the fields and we would have the information we wanted. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe look at that. Oh, and I'm glad Jacob brought up assignment agreements and PRs. Because segue. What a great, what a great segue. Um, it's time to move to the .NET Foundation. We had a discussion, I don't know, six nine months ago about it, um, or longer. I forget. That, and we basically at that time it didn't. There wasn't a lot of value, perceived value at that time because everything was kind of working for us. .NET Foundation also didn't have solutions for signing certificates and other things. They were new. They were trying to get their feet underneath themselves. Um, in the last week, it's come to um, our attention that the assignment agreements are not being processed. The emails there were bouncing, which we didn't realize because we had an automated thing sending them, and the bounces were not coming back to people. Um, so that's not good. Um, also, Outer Curve is not improving the infrastructure. As mentioned, that we're still signing with a SHA-1 hash, which at some point is going to turn into a major signing problem somewhere. We have to fix the 4.0 signing anyway, but we need better certificates. And Outer Curve is just not doing much in that space. Um, and so the .NET Foundation has been very friendly to us. They were When I first had this conversation, they were not, oh, you guys have to move. They were much more, hey, if you guys want to move, let us know what you need. We'd love to help out. Um, since then, .NET Foundation also has had some very high profile uh, projects. Um, and they're running around doing lots and lots of things very fast and complicated and stuff like that. So we are no longer a large software project, unlike a lot of the other smaller projects kind of run around, you know, actively maintained. They have a number of actively maintained projects. I'm thinking of ASP.NET and the .NET Core things in general that they're helping run around. Um, so they have a much easier way of doing the assignment agreement. They're actually um, uh, CLAs are a little different, but the same. Um, but the as Jacob is bringing up, you will have to reapply, but the reapply is much simpler now. It's all online. You click a couple buttons and you're you're done. Um, I've done this for the, the, now. the CLAs are, are CLAs. a lot nicer, um, yeah. easier rather. Easier. Uh, you might also consider them to be nicer because they're not assignment agreements yeah. the way that Autoco ran them. They're you know, contributor license agreements. Right. Usually a lot simpler to get through if you need, say, you know, an employer to sign off. Right. Um, and they, while they do not have an automated system for doing signing certificates, they will give us one. Uh, we could handle that. Um, they've talked about other ways they could do it. They're basically like, what do you need in this space? Because we should do something in here. Help us out. And I'm like, fine. You know, we, we should, we'll get that worked out. Um, and Jacob, I, I I don't know. It's possible the assignment agreements can transfer from Outer Curve to .NET Foundation. There is a block of legal that happens behind the scenes because there is an assignment of the code and the copyright moves from Outer Curve to .NET. So I'm not sure if assignment agreements can transfer um, under that agreement or if you'll have to resign. I don't know, um, but it will be one of the things that we ask about. Um, so the other thing was we were, weren't we near a release or something? We were in the middle of something else when we talked about doing .NET Foundation. Um, and we're kind of out of the, the worst of things. I mean, we still have this 3.10.3 hanging overhead, but we're not in a hurry to do 3.11 and we're not, and I, we need to finish 4, but we're not like in the end of 4. So I think it probably now is a good time as well to kind of do this legal stuff, get through whatever bumps we have doing it and then be on the other side of it. Um, the .NET Foundation is clearly not going away. Um, so that was another question, I think. It was really early back in the days we were first looking at it. I think it's come along. Um, anyways. Yeah, so, um, so it can't be assigned. All depends on the transfer, right. It all depends on the transfer agreement. So we'll see what, um, they'll what happens. So the big question here for you guys that are generally active in the Wix tool set and stuff is, do you have any big objections to moving the .NET Foundation? Um, 
there's work involved, but that's going to be on me. Um, there's some system changes. There's the CLA that'll be a little different, but again, that's pretty much all on me and things like that. Um, so, I mean, if anyone has a philosophical issue with the .NET Foundation, now would be a great time to get that out. Um, <laughs> something like that. Um, so, anything else? They have project forms. Yeah, we'll have to decide what we do about project forms. Hoping it would still honor those of us if we move. I'm hoping that MS would s also would still honor those of us if we move. Probably. This is this is one. Of, yeah, the MSCN is one of the things. That yeah, we'll actually, that's one of the things I think is more likely that will be honored than not going forward. So. Um, yeah, <laughs> I expect that's probably going to be better than worse in Dynamic Foundation. Well, I know it'll be, it'll be fine in Dynamic Foundation. That is not a problem. That has been solved. Um, I don't know if it's going to continue to work in our curve. <laughs> that's actually one of the question marks. Um, basically, outer curve is kind of just status quoing at this point and not maintaining even a lot. So things on the edges that feel like they're on the edges are just not. I don't know what their core vision is. Or turning the problems. So anyway, um, if this happens, the little uh, purple icon in the bottom will change, and I think that's probably the the most visible thing for most stuff. Other things, questions, comments, because I didn't get any major objections to .NET Foundation. Uh, Sean's not here, who's another important player, so we'll bounce it off him. Make sure he doesn't wig out about it. I don't expect him to. Um, other things that are going on. Um, I want to toss in the, um, we've had another <laughs> request to move the meeting off of, off of Fridays, I think, and probably to back to the middle of the week, since that was apparently working better for people in general. I've gotten a few people saying Fridays are okay, but they're harder. Middle of the week would be better. Um, so anybody have any objections to moving this back towards lunches in the middle of the week? Or maybe even earlier. Uh, what about earlier, like uh, 10 Pacific time? So another hour and a half earlier. That's you know more like lunchtime-ish for those of you in the central time zone. I know there's a fewer of you. Um, and, uh, we're just kind of... It, it's a thing that we do probably every... I, I was thinking about every year. This feels a little bit changed a little bit more, but we need to kind of like reset, make sure everybody would, uh, you know, is on board and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, if it was 10 on, you know, Wednesdays or something like that, then it would be, yeah, 12, yeah, 12 central standard. Yes, this is Pacific time I'm talking. What we also call Fire Giant standard time, which I appreciate isn't very helpful for you out of Fire Giant, but that's what we call it. Right. Or helpful for those of us who aren't in Pacific time zone. But it's extremely helpful for you outside Pacific time. You just have to do math. Yeah, well, and the rest of you don't. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I can't do GMT because um, daylight savings time is what throws me off. You have to understand, Fire Giant Standard Time doesn't move with daylight savings times. Um, well, where, if I move to Indiana, where they don't necessarily switch <laughs> to daylight savings time, then... I would have to do even more math. To <laughs> no, it's right. Yeah, Arizona. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's All right. It's a county thing in Indiana. All right. So, uh, anything else people want to talk about besides time zones and things like that? Um, I, I, I'll send mail to the Wix devs to kind of go. Here's what I'm thinking, and then people can say, "No, this time would be better. That time would be better." Um, I've been thinking maybe we should do it at the end of the day, but that puts it in the evening for a bunch of you standard guys, and that's still not early enough to get European, um, Australian or even European easily. So I don't know. It's kind of stuck. I know we're very America-centric here, but oh well. How do you filter issues for triage? Uh, I, the filter I'm using is is issue and no label. That's how I go through all the issues for triage. 
Um, and technically speaking, I should also look for anything that's marked triage. But do we have any bugs that were marked supposedly to be labeled triage? We had yes. one. It was another one. We another holdover uh, uh, waiting for someone to reply. Okay. Um, then we will uh, we will cover that next week. I'll remember it next week. And if it's a holdover, another week won't hurt it. I, I, I actually closed oh, it. Did you close it? Fine. I'm fine with that, too, if it's been out for a while. Okay. Well, that meeting went better. There's a whole lot of content to cover, and I think we got through it all. Um, unless anybody has anything bigger. Um, it might be good to drop a link in the readme, Bob, that has a link to here's how to see the open issues. Um on the untriaged. Yeah, the untriaged, yeah. things that we are going to triage this week. Um, unfortunately, you can't do it in one query because the query mechanism in GitHub isn't powerful enough to do no label or label is triage as far yeah. as that I've been yeah. able to find. It's like it's all anded. There's no ors, Yeah, which is really yeah. frustrating, but whatever. Um, so it would be two links, I guess, is what you have to do. Although we rarely have bugs that we leave, that we mark for triage. Yeah. We tend to just uh, let them float. Right, right. Uh, I'll, yeah, we can skip that one. That's not very interesting. Uh, no, probably not. To uh, most people. To most people, yes. That will tell you what are we going to triage at the next meeting kind of thing. Yes. Anything else? Other stuff going on? Things people want to talk about? Discuss? All right. So I, I'm going to say we have no final decisions out of this. Uh, my, I was basically floating a bunch of things past you guys, but I'm pretty sure everything that we've discussed here will happen um, in the coming days, weeks, months, depending on the, the complexity of creating issue templates versus moving the legal entity that owns the Wix tool set. Um, <laughs> one of those is not like the other. Um, all right, that's all I got. So. Until next week, you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye.